Welcome to Trend Watch, your source for the latest in fashion and style. On today's episode, Soul to Soul, making a difference one shoe at a time, as Tom Shoes travels to South Africa. But first, they've been called the windows to the soul, and this spring we are in for an eyeful of exquisiteness as we get all the beauty headlines. Vibrant color palettes, artful eyes, and edgy haircuts ruled the spring runways when it came to beauty. The season was so much about art and flair. It was a season about color and exuberance, and there really was no fear. Makeup artists pushed the envelope by mixing unexpected combinations of color. For lips, there were brilliant pops, and also rich hues usually reserved for the fall season. There were basically two main trends. There was the really bright, colorful lip, and then there was the dark lip. And the dark lip was unusual for spring because these sort of dark brooding colors, wine stained colors are usually what one would associate with fall. But Dolce & Gabbana had a really beautiful dark lip. Same thing at Lanvin, it was a glossy wine stained lip that was very sort of vampiric. Miu Miu had a very dark lip also. Louis Vuitton painted the way with bright lips. Pat McGrath did an amazing look for the faces to play off what was going on with the clothes. And basically each girl had a different colored lip, but it wasn't just shades of red or pink, blues, greens, purples. It was really as if you had opened a box of Crayola crayons. Other lips were ladylike and cheerful. At Carolina Herrera, Diane Kendall did a beautiful apricot lip that was just very glossy, very bright. Same thing for Bottega Veneta, like a clementine orange, and it was brighter than what you would normally expect, especially from Bottega Veneta, which is usually very subdued. Eyes were artful accessories. They were glam rock at Gucci, dramatic at Narciso, and cat-like at Marnie. At Rodarte, it was James Caliardo's for Mac, and it was a sort of geometric, kind of Cleopatra-esque eye that he described as looking like the girl had drawn it on herself. Art Nouveau artist Gustave Klimt served as inspiration for the intricate eyes rimmed in black with metallic accents that Pat McGrath dreamed up at Prada. Pat McGrath is really the most prolific makeup artist working today in terms of high fashion editorial and also backstage. She did over 20 shows this season and she's really just the person that so many of these designers have come to rely on. I really enjoy working within the shows and going into all the best houses and getting a preview of everything. And that's where you get a lot of your inspiration from the fabrics and from the way when you get to speak to the greatest designers. Strong defined brows were back. Probably the best example of the well-defined brow was at Balenciaga. It was a really architectural, groomed, strong brow. And Proenza Schooler also went bold with brows. When it came to hair, there was a wealth of choices. We saw a lot of ponytails, we saw buns, we saw hair up, we saw hair down. Some locks were inspired by art. At Rodarte, Odile Gilbert attached extensions to ponytails that looked like they'd been dipped in paint. But two trends dominated the stage, shortcuts and color. This season it was really about a strong cut. Everybody was talking about Freya. She emerged in New York with a new haircut that was angular and it was cool. It was Freya, it was Anya Rubik, it's Agnes Dean. It's about having the courage to cut off your hair and to make a personal statement. Hair color was just as important for spring. Blondes traded their sun-kissed locks for warmer shades of chestnut and caramel. Like with some of the eye and lip looks, it's about trading fall for spring. At Balenciaga, Nicola Gasquer cast almost his entire lineup of girls with brunettes. I love to look at Gucci. All of the models who are the classic icon blondes, even they showed up a little bit darker. So there was color in the hair, there was color in the makeup, there was color in the clothes. It was really a joyful season. Blake Mikowski is on a mission to donate 50,000 pairs of shoes to underprivileged children in South Africa. This is one of many trips he's been making around the world to help impoverished communities. It all began when Blake met poverty-stricken children on a trip to South America. Determined to make a change, he created Tom's Shoes. Our goal with Tom's Shoes is to give every child that doesn't have a pair of shoes a pair of shoes. It's very simple. I mean, you buy a pair, we give a pair away. Oh, my shoes. 
For every pair that is purchased, Tom's Shoes donates a pair of vibrant Argentine-inspired canvas shoes to a child in need. Since the company's inception, Blake has seen his dream come to fruition, as he's already delivered 10,000 pairs of shoes to kids in Argentina, and now 50,000 to the children in South Africa. Any time that we see people like you having love to us, we really give you love. We thank you. Thank you so much. Tom's is changing the world, one shoe at a time. Be sure to tune in to more episodes and don't forget to shop the shows.